Hello, my name is Noden, and welcome to The Games We Play. This is the very first video for our new channel, and we're pretty excited to bring you a beta spotlight for Star Wars The Old Republic. So, what's cool? I suppose we should start with who's it supposed to appeal to? Who's it supposed to appeal to? Obviously Star Wars fans, obviously fans of Knights of the Old Republic. This is basically the continua continuation of the storyline from Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2, and this is like, I think as Bioware said, KOTOR 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. It happens, I don't know what it is, 500, 800, 1000 years into the future um, from where we left off with KOTOR 2, but uh, there we have it. Uh, so one of the big things that we, we see is a comparison between this and World of Warcraft, which is natural. I mean, World of Warcraft is the big fish, as it were. It's the one that you have to compete against, period. Uh, there are other um, subscription MMOs out there, but none of them are really holding a candle to World of Warcraft. Um, of course, many people will also remember that there is also a, a well, for the next couple of weeks anyways, uh, there is still another uh, Star Wars MMO out there in Star Wars Galaxies, but their servers will officially, um, I'm told, be shut down in just a couple of weeks, I believe. Um, so really, this is where all those people are going to pretty much end up going, we hope. Uh, Bioware hopes. Somebody hopes. Anyway, so, how does it compare to WoW? Is it as good as WoW is? Yes. Um, a lot of people have said that this is, seems very much like just World of Warcraft with Star Wars skins, and that's okay with me. For me, as a Star Wars fan, that's what what people want. That's I want to play WoW with a lightsaber, and I'm sure there are plenty of people who are playing World of Warcraft right now um, as paladins or death knights going around pretending that they're Jedi or Sith, respectively, and, and they're going to enjoy this. Um, it's not World of Warcraft, but it's like World of Warcraft. You're not going to find a lot of surprises, you're not going to feel completely out of your comfort zone, you're just going to relax into a familiar game style and a familiar play style uh, for many things. This is kind of right into that sweet spot, it's right there. Uh, right where I really liked World of Warcraft. It's got some great new features that World of Warcraft doesn't have, which we'll get to in just a little bit, but mostly it's just, it's just, it's hit that nice sweet spot where things aren't too easy, they're not too hard, they're polished, but they could still develop and, and, and the time and get that kind of I don't know, that fluidity that World of Warcraft has gotten because it has been around for so long and it's been through the, the testing phase, as you were, for years. Uh, years and years of people just saying, oh, we like this, we don't like this, and Star Wars The Old Republic will obviously benefit from that as much as any game would, but right now it's just, it's, 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 in an, it's got a nice balance and it's in a really great place to start. The other issue with uh, the WoW comparison is that World of Warcraft being so polished over years of, in many ways it is, it's like a stone in, in, that you find on the lakeside and after centuries of water lapping over it, it's got this really nice polish to it. So now when somebody sits down to play a new MMO, if it doesn't have that same polish to it, we're going to go, oh, it's crap, I might as well just play WoW. And, and it's going to be really tough for a game to kind of enter into that market. What Star Wars The Old Republic obviously does is it appeals for a specific audience and it does so with a very well polished game. The graphics are gorgeous, the gameplay is smooth, there aren't a lot of, almost no really bugs, I don't remember getting hung up on anything particularly. It was a great gaming experience and I'm sure that the final release will be even better. Yes, so is it better than World of Warcraft? For some of the features I would say yes, uh, mainly, which we'll get into more, the dialogue is a major, the dialogue sequences, I should say, are a major portion of Soko, and it's really, really, really powerful, and it's a really big piece. Um, a lot of people go, oh, there's a lot of talk, and, and it shouldn't make that much difference, but it really does, and I was, I was surprised, and some of the other people that I talked to were actually quite surprised at how much it did. So is it better than World of Warcraft? For me, yes. For everybody, probably not. Again, not everybody's going to be a Star Wars fan, or a KOTOR fan, or a Star Wars Galaxy expat, it's going to be, it's going to, there's going to be a division there, but it's going to be okay. It's going to be, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Is it a World of Warcraft killer? Obviously not. You can't expect to reach the same kind of broad markets that World of Warcraft does, and certainly not the numbers. Um, I'm kind of like saying generally that the only World of Warcraft killer out there is World of Warcraft. 
So, uh, I suppose we should probably do a bit of a feature rundown. I did mention briefly the dialogue, so we might as well start there. The dialogues in this are fantastic. If you've played World of Warcraft or MMOs, you generally have a block of text that gives you the information that you need for your quests. You've got to either sit there and read it, or you just close it and hope that whatever other entities that are in the game will kind of pick up the slack for you, as it were. But, but with these dialogue scenes, you get this immersion into your character. You feel like you're really part of, of the storyline, and the storyline becomes really... I don't even know what the right term is. Um, in casing, you feel, really feel like you're part of the story and that you you really feel like you want to go out there and do this or do that or whatever it is you're meant to do. Kill a bunch of people or whatever it is. Um, so one of the great things about these dialogues is that they provokes an emotional response. Is that you're playing through this and you're and you're feeling it, like literally emotions and, and a lot of what the Star Wars, especially the KOTOR uh, franchise and whatnot is about, is about that battle between good and evil, the light side, dark side points, and living with them and making moral decisions that will change the story and your playing through the game later on. There are times when you're making decisions, listening to dialogue, and you really start to feel like you're part of this character. I was playing through with, uh, with a friend of mine. We were both playing as um, um, Sith Inquisitors, and you're playing through this and you've got this, whatever, quest handler, we'll give him a handler. You really start to hate this guy, and it's not just like slight, like, you know, I don't like this guy kind of a thing. I mean, you actually fit emotionally feel her hate, and you're sitting there going, oh my god, I'm actually becoming this Sith. Fall. I'm actually, bleh, I'm there, I am completely there, and it's amazing, and it's really cool. So, but yes, yeah, so dialogues are absolutely amazing and worth death. every penny. I could go on and on, but I could, I could do an so hour talk about these dialogues, and I probably have. Um, companions are another one. Uh, people who played the uh, Knights of the Old Republic um, previous games will remember, will will know companions. But basically, you're given some little piece of useful person, sort of. And they and they kind of help you, kind of hinder you through your wandering through the world. As you can probably tell by my less than enthusiastic um, tellings about, about them, I, I I'm not a fan of I'm not a fan of the genre of companion, the the entity that is a companion, whether it's Kotor or. Star Wars The Old Republic, or Skyrim even, I can't stand it. World of Warcraft, same thing. Hunter's Pets, a big blueberry with the warlock, no thank you. I don't like them, not at all. Yes, they're useful, but they're always in the way, and I can't see things, and or in the case of Skyrim, they're always blocking my path, and I can't get bloody past them, and, and they're bumping me into stuff, and I hate them. Anyways, there's lots of good features to companions in Star Wars The Old Republic, including crew skills, which is our next point. And frankly, they aren't as bad in this as they are, have been in other games. They are slightly better at staying out of your way than the, the companion type uh, entities in World of Warcraft, but I also think that they're a little bit less responsive to attack orders, and the AI isn't quite as good uh, for them uh, that way. But, and again, you're always stuck with the same crappy a follow AI which never works and you end up 18 miles away from your pet and you're fighting 30,000 things and, and all you really need is your pet to come in and tank one guy once and uh, of course he'll show up immediately after you kill that person or die and uh, it's the same I think for across a whole MMOs or anyways the one useful thing the companions do in Star Wars Yoda Public is they have crew skills uh, so this is the same as your crafting skills in any other game, except for you yourself don't actually have to do the crafting, which is pretty cool. Yeah, anyways, you can send them, you can have a number of, com of companions all stuffed in your ship, and they can do all the crafting for you, just tell them to do this and this and this, and you can go off adventuring or reading through the volumes and volumes and volumes of lore, or whatever it is you do with your free time in-game. Who knows? Play back. And then the other cool feature that I want to talk about really quickly is the, I don't know what they call it, I've been calling it active combat. I, I don't know what it is. Basically all it is is it's just something to break up the humdrum, boring hack, hack, hack of MMO or just generally RPG kind of play. Normally you're sitting there with a sword and you're whack, 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 hitting each other over the head with sticks. 
in Star Wars The Old Republic, they have this, again, I have no idea what it's called, I call it the act, the act of combat, where the actual weapons are kind of designed to, or at least the, wep the fights are designed to kind of see where the enemy weapons are and kind of try to deflect different things here and there, like blaster bolts or enemy lightsabers and things like that. Mostly, you're never going to notice it. You're going to see a lot of still just whacking away. But every once in a while, you'll see just this really cool little thing, and you'll remember that it's there, and you go, that's pretty cool. Like, again, and I completely forgot about this feature when I read the feature list. I was playing along, and at one point I'm watching my character, and suddenly I just see him throw his lightsaber behind his back to deflect um, a sword strike from somebody coming from behind him. And I went, man, that's cool. And I actually stopped. I'm like, man, that's cool. And probably, probably was killed. But, you know, it was still a great, cool little feature that was there, but you didn't notice it. It wasn't obtrusive, but it was cool just to spot it that once. Again, most of the time, you're never going to notice it. It's going to be hack, hack, hack the whole while. Um, so we're going to quickly, I guess now we're just going to quickly do a likes and dislikes. I'm very long on this video already. Um, so things that I liked about it, I did like about the, the dialogues. I loved how immersive the storyline and the dialogues were. Uh, the cutscenes, which I didn't get to talk about, um, which are part and parcel with the dialogues, I suppose, but not entirely. They're fantastic. The storylines, um, I played through almost all of the storylines from levels 1 through 10 now. Um, I haven't done uh, Sith Warrior or the uh, Jedi Knight because I'm probably going to play a Jedi Knight like a big nerdy person. And I didn't want to play any class that was going to be exactly like that, so I wanted to keep that fresh for when I actually play the game. The game is very playable. I liked the crew skills. I think it's pretty cool. Oh, you could experience for lore, which I thought was collecting lore, which I thought was very cool. Uh, again, you don't have to read it, it just, you know, you show up, you click a song, have some experience. Not a lot, but there you go. Sound and music is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. The music is crazy, which you can hear, and sound effects are amazing. Uh, the cover mechanics. I like the cover mechanics. A lot of people didn't. Again, I can't go really much into it, um, but they're there, they work, and it's kind of cool. It's different than other things that are in a lot of other MMOs, but hey, it's there, it's kind of cool. Things I dislike, um, oh, uh, one of the big things that I, well, I shouldn't say dislike, but kind of irks me a little bit, is the lack of ability to choose the voice of your character. I mean, I realize that all these, you know, cutscenes and dialogue scenes, that there is already just buttload of, do of, of actual um, recorded voice that had to go on. A little bit of option would be cool. Again, I understand. Very tough. But they get it. Oh, more character creation stuff. Hair. Oh my god, the hair. Okay. One day, a game is going to come out that has a character creation screen. And they're going to have options where you're going to be flipping through the hair and you're never going to be able to just decide which hair to choose because they're all amazing. Star Wars The Old Republic, like every other game with a character creation I've ever played, has horrendous hair selections and maybe you'll come up with two or three that you like and then you'll just repeat them for your entire time until you get really bored and you go for something stupid and just say ah forget it i'll just wear a helmet all the time yeah i find the ones for this game are especially bad a lot of them just don't seem to fit different things or different races it's a little bit weird i don't know mm. But really not a lot of dislikes. It's honestly, it's a good game. It's polished. Yes, it's a little bit like World of Warcraft, but I'm okay with that. Anyway, so we're very long in this uh, video already. I'm going to probably have to split it into two. Stay tuned because uh, I also have a couple, a number, I don't know. Anyways, I've got a Let's Play style um, sort of video, which I'll be also releasing on, um, or putting up uh, after this. And, uh, and I hope you guys watch that and I hope you enjoy it. And uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, no. Thanks for watching. Now, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Ciao.